everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and I am back from Florida. And so on Tuesdays on this channel, we go through channeled material. So if you're new here, of course, I'm so, so, so happy to have you here if you're interested in our previous readings or the other channeled material that we have done this is all coming are going to be in a playlist called understanding the magdalene that of course will be linked below i also want to remind you guys that i do have an amazon affiliate link um, and if you go that link will be in the description box below as well and if you go there you will see a category called books used on the show this is all the books that we have gone through so far on this um, on this show the channel material and as always i do suggest since we're not a cult i suggest that you have your own copy of this material as well um of obviously when i'm reading this stuff i'm going to be giving my commentary but of course your opinions are also valuable if for some reason you're not interested in buying the book or you can't afford it i do read everything that is written in these books and this is the last of the tom kenyon books that we're going through which is the great human potential it's been a few weeks since we've done a installment from me traveling and being sick so we are starting today with the love of your life dot 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 is you and this is page 73 if you are following along all of your relationships are founded on self-love which is then reflected back to you through these relationships. We consider lack of self-love the number one issue on the planet at this time, closely followed by persecution in seconds. And there was a whole chapter in meditation on persecution. And I do, I do agree with them, right? Like everything in our life is a reflection back to us. And so we teach people how to treat us so if we don't love ourselves then how could we expect our partners to love us i hope that makes sense we really want to make this point clear it is not about your relationship with others but first and foremost the relationship you have with self that will allow you to access more love joy happiness abundance health and vitality this is a major core issue for you, and we wish to assist you in shifting your perspective. Absolutely. Again, as I just said, everything is really just a reflection back on you. There are many programs in mass consciousness that keep you locked into lack of self-love. We're going to talk about some of them here. The first one that we have quite a bit of trouble with because it sets you up for failure and separation is the idea of what you call a soulmate and twin flames that's hysterical because we've talked a lot about twin flames on this channel and um yeah i do believe that can happen absolutely but again just because you've split with the with a soul your soul is split into two doesn't mean that you're going to be with your other half or that you should necessarily be with your other half because you are an independent being we are not saying they do not exist, but what we are saying is that it is an extremely rare occurrence in this particular lifetime. Absolutely it is. Not everyone has a twin. It is a very rare occurrence. Even if you choose not to work with a soulmate or twin flame, it really doesn't matter because the relationship with a twin flame or a soulmate is no different than any other relationship that you can create for yourself. It was a label that you put on the relationship at a time when you did not have the potential to interact with as many people as you do today due to your ability to travel and connect via the internet. Absolutely. I think people have a really romantic view of this idea of twin flames. And so they put a lot of um, external um, stock into this other person like oh my god if i was just with my twin flame then my whole life would make sense it would be this beautiful romantic story blah 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 and that's simply not true you know they they say with twin flame relationships that because you are the same soul any problems that you have are going to be magnetized by 10 when you're with your twin and the only way for a twin flame relationship to work is if both people have actually worked on themselves, if that makes sense. So a lot of these twin flame relationships can be extremely unhealthy and extremely toxic. 
And so, you know, I'm glad that they're not romanticizing this idea of twin flames because I do think it gets overly romantic. In fact, Kelly Teal, my friend Kelly Teal, the survivor, survivor of Nexium, uh, sent me a link the other day about a new cult that's popped up having to do with twin flames, right? And so it's all of this like looking for things outside of ourselves to heal ourselves, to fix ourselves. And that's not that's not spiritual, right? It's not just like tarot cards, divination. And God knows I love my divination. I love my tarot cards, but that's not spirituality. It's not spirituality. That's communication. Being able to channel other beings or communicate with other beings is just like you and I communicating in this realm. It's just communication. Spirituality, the practice of spirituality is you working on your own spirit, you healing your own soul, right? It's got nothing to do with talking to an angel or talking to a past loved one or even channeling past lives. It is everything to do with where you are in the here and now, not the there then, but the here now and working on your own awareness, your own spirituality for yourself. Right. So even to them talking about twin flames and stuff, it's the same thing. It's like every time you look for something or someone outside of yourself to fix you, it's never going to work. And that's that's where good therapists, I know there are bad therapists, but that's where good therapists and good teachers really shine. And we're going to talk more about this, actually, Kelly and I, where I want to do an episode on on a documentary that kind of goes into this a little bit more, you know, like a, a cult leader is going to make you believe that the answer to your problems is outside of yourself is within their, them, but a teacher or a therapist is going to give you and teach you the template to help you heal yourself. Right. And the most important thing for a teacher or a therapist to do is to not interrupt anybody else's karma but to help the person, assist the person, and them helping themselves. Because at the end of the day, you hold that. You are the key to your own healing. And so, you know, I, I, we kind of I went off on a tangent there. But I hope that makes sense. Like, nothing outside of you is going to fix you. No political party. No b white hat. No guru. No anything. You are that person that will fix yourself. You can utilize gurus and utilize teachings to give you a path to fix yourself, as I have done, but that person or that teaching isn't actually what's fixing you. Yeah? It's you fixing yourself. I hope that makes sense. If that doesn't make sense, or if you guys want me to go into a more complex video about that i'll be glad to like i said i think kelly and i am going to reach out to kelly and see if we can do something a little bit on that especially dealing with some other cults um but yeah just let me know in the comment section if you want a more of a, a conversation around that the idea of a twin flame or soulmate sets you all up with the notion that there is only one person with whom you can experience love and if you don't meet this person you are missing out. This lifetime, more than any other, you are focused on integrating as many aspects of yourself as possible. One way to accomplish this is to work with those with whom you have unresolved issues in other lifetimes. The more relationships you have, the better your chances to integrate, some of which may be romantic relationships. I'm going to push back a little here on the other lifetime stuff. I am not... I absolutely 100% believe in reincarnation, 100%. But I've been on this spiritual journey for close to 20 years now. No amount of past life regressions are going to heal you. In fact, most of the time, they make things worse. I want you guys to think about this for a second. I just said earlier about there then and here now do you want to be there then or do you want to be here now because right now your soul is here now not there then now let's think about this for a second 
We're in a third density reality. Planet Earth is third density. The whole point of third density is choice. And because of that, there is opposing forces. Opposing, sorry about that guys. I had a, um, a phone call I had to answer. So I had to cut, cut recording. So if you saw a weird cut there, that's why. So going back to this idea of past lives, and it's funny, I was actually thinking about this this morning before I taught again, kind of to, to re-examine our perspective of past lives. We, again, we're in a third density planet. And if you're familiar with the law of one, um, then you've heard me say this before. If you're new here and you're not familiar with the law of one, Again, down in the Amazon affiliate link books used on the show, I do have the law. The first law of one is in there. I highly suggest people read it. because, In my opinion, it makes the most sense. But third density, every density we're in, every dimension we're in, there's a certain purpose for our soul to refine itself, right? And so third density is the density of choice. And in order to make choices, you have to have complex thought about particular issues, whether you're gonna go in fourth density service to self or fourth density service to others. Because of that, because of that, my friends, hold on one second, there we go. Um, there is opposing forces. We see this, we see the opposing forces, we see it with the dark and the light, all that kind of stuff. And so um, that creates, whenever you have an opposing force, that creates friction. Now, given the fact that this is a very complex and heavy density to be in, where your mind, your consciousness is focused on this complexity of, of dark and light, good, evil, Lucifer, God, whatever you want to call it, with that, bearing that in mind, if you were to then remember your past lives on top of that, it would cause too much trauma. Right. So let, let's put it this way, too. Like you have these particular soul contracts with particular people. So your mother, your father, your siblings in this life could have potentially been your lovers in a past life or your spouse could have been your father in a past life or your executor in a past life. You see the dynamics of relationships. And if you could remember that, it would cause more trauma. So what we're working with, when you have an issue that's coming from a past life, it is not necessary, nor in my opinion, is it healthy to go back to that past life because you're not there, you're here. So if you have, let's say that you have a fear, fear of alligators and in a past life you were at, ate, eaten by an alligator, your job is not to heal it from that place, it's to heal, heal it from here now. So the story the as shanti says from aquarius rising africa the drama of it all that's just the drama what's left the residual attachment emotional attachment is what we have to work on right whether that's anger jealousy deceit and that needs to be worked on in the here and in the now the tools that you have that i have as bryce in this life is what i need to actually be working on from this perspective now, sometimes people, this is another reason why, in my opinion, past life regression is not healthy, because sometimes, my friends, what you think is a past life issue isn't. Let's take something simple, like the fear of heights. Yes, some people do have more of a fear of heights than other people. But you ask anyone who is a skydiver, anyone who, who does that, and they do it all the time, they're adrenaline junkies. So what does that tell you? If they're considered adrenaline junkies, it means that every time they jump out of that plane, their adrenaline is running. So there's a reaction. Even if they're not afraid of heights like you are, there is a nervous system reaction that's happening. Something simple like a fear of heights is naturally ingrained into your biological makeup right there the body's point is the main purpose is to keep you alive and so you are born you're born with natural inclinations to fear certain things it most of the time has nothing to do with a past life now you know you could have been thrown off a building or you know died by jumping or something like that in a past life 
that's not that's not saying that that can't be a possibility. But generally speaking, it's like backbending, right? Like I, I talk about this a lot with my students in yoga. A lot of times people have a reaction to backbending, not because sometimes it is because of heartache, because they've ha had their heart broken a lot. But we also have to consider the nervous system. You have more nerve endings on your front body than you do your back body. Again, this is to keep you alive because you have vital organs inside your rib cage. That's why you have a rib cage is to protect those vital organs. So, you know, if you're walking down the street and you see a, someone's like throwing a ball and a ball's coming at you, if you don't have enough time to react to catch the ball, what do you do? You do this, right? You naturally are inclined to do this. That's that nervous system reaction to protect your vital organs. Back in the days of yore, in more tribal days, spears were being thrown a lot. And so you see, you know to protect your vital organs. And so when you're doing things like backbending, sometimes the student is not up against their emotional connections to trauma, but literally they're just up against their own biology, right? And so we don't want to dramatize things that don't need to be dramatized. Um, you know, we I've heard so many people from Scientology where they focus so much on past lives think that half the shit that they worked with, they just made up anyway in their imagination. They don't even know if it was real now. And so, but that's the thing. It's not important. It's not important to, to, to really know. You're not, third density is not the density of knowing. You're here now. So be here now. Use the tools that you have as you are now to work on your abandonment issues, to work on your jealousy, to work on your anger issues, betrayal, whatever it is. Use you, you who you are now, to heal that. In my opinion, a lot, I know I've said this before, but I guess it bears repeating. People who become obsessed with past lives, in my opinion, they're trying to avoid something from this life. They're trying to escape something from this life. And if they don't figure out what that is, it is going to haunt them lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. So just make sure when you are dabbling with past lives, you're not using it as a form of escapism. You're not trying to solve any problems from that time because you can't, right? You can't solve problems from that time because you're you now. You can you can work on them from here, from this point, okay? And just leave, leave, it, leave it alone, right? Leave it alone. Um, I always find it kind of comical too because... Everybody always wants to be someone famous from the past. Like, but, you know, chances are most of your lives, you were a peasant sweeping the streets. Maybe one life for every person you were, a, you know, a big wig. But not everyone was Julius Caesar, right? Not everyone was Cleopatra. Yeah. And so, so it becomes this fan fantasy of the ego. And that, that's not, the ego needs to be checked at the door. I hope that makes sense. Again, if you have any questions about that, leave them in the comment section below all right within a relationship there are about a hundred points of vibrational connection that you can establish in most long-term relationships about 30 of these points align in most short-term relationships you work with about 10 that's interesting in this lifetime you are able to work through these issues pretty quick quickly whereas in other times in history the pace of integration was much slower as the overall vibration was much lower. It took you much longer to identify the lower programs that were running. In the past, you may have chosen to only work on four or five big issues in a lifetime. Relationships tended to last a bit longer as it took you a while to see these issues. And you typically had a smaller pool of people to interact with to be reflections for you. I just said that every person is a reflection of you. Remember, at this time, you have more universal support as you move through the photon band. These high vibrational particles assist you in the process of integration, so you are able to work faster and with a greater range of frequencies. Today, because the pace is accelerated, you are trying to integrate as much as you possibly can. What you may find is that before you incarnated, you set up contracts for potential relationships. For instance, you had person A, B, and C lined up as possible romantic relationship. If A wasn't ready, then you had B as a backup. If A and B weren't available, you moved on to C and so on. 
you set up your contract this way because timing is far more challenging in this lifetime. Absolutely. And that's one thing you see with many challenge uh, channelings is that they, they have a hard time with time. I think uh, we've talked about this before with like the Emerald Tablets. And I, I always forget uh, the order. We're, we're either right now in time space and are moving into space time or it's, it's flipped the other way. I'm not sure. But we know we know time isn't real anyway. It's a, a concoction of man. And um, and yeah, we are in a quickening stage. Time is moving a lot faster right now. And, and we are we are. As you guys know, we've talked about this. The law of one speaks about this. Earth is about to ascend to fourth density, positive, hopefully. And so we are at a very frictiony point on this roller coaster ride because there's a lot of change happening. There's a lot of evolution happening. And so things are happening rapidly for our timeline and maybe timelines of the past. All right, let's see here. You set up your contracts this way because timing is far more challenging in this lifetime. The potential for you to integrate is much greater as you do so. The need to connect or the attraction to connect with specific individuals will shift. And that is true. That's something about twin flames. Speaking of twin flames, one twin flame could be doing a lot of work and could evolve higher in consciousness than the other twin flame because you're independent beings at this point. Even though you're one soul that's split, you are still in two independent beings. So that is that is true as well. Most of you hold the belief that contracts are eternally binding and difficult to change. On the contrary, they are very malleable. You think of them as heavy and that if you don't show up at a particular time or place, you are missing out on an opportunity. That comes from fear, lack, distrust, and disconnection. You never, ever miss an opportunity. If you are pulsing out frequency, it will be reflected back to you. It's just a matter of whether you are open to perceive and receive it. The form could be slightly different to that of the opportunity you passed on initially, but the frequency that you want to experience will be identical to the original. This is very important because oftentimes in relationships, you tend to focus on a particular person as opposed to saying open to the form. When you are open to form, the person who is the best vibrational match for you can show up. Discomfort arises when you get stuck on or attached to a person who is not the highest vibrational match for you. Attachment will always create discomfort. Take a nice breath. You know, it's interesting as, as I'm reading this, I'm thinking about past like boys in my life. And like when I was younger and I'm in a very healthy relationship now, but uh, old boyfriends that you get obsessed with and, and you think that, you know, the fighting and the drama is all just passion when no, it's actually toxicity. Like healthy relationships can be kind of boring sometimes because they're healthy, right? Sometimes we can, we confuse toxicity for passion, we confuse an unhealthy dynamic for a passionate one. When you're in a healthy relationship, your partner isn't going to bring toxicity into, there's not going to be fighting, right? There's not going to, well, you know, you have little arguments, of course we all do, but there's not going to be that tension, right? There's going to be trust. There's going to be loyalty. There's going to be support. And so, yeah, it, when, when you're in that situation where there's that much discomfort, as they said, it's a pretty good indication that there's not a vibrational match and it's not healthy. But there's also lessons to be learned from that too, right? All right. Indeed, you have many individuals with whom you have contracted. Again, your desire to have a twin flame on this planet is a little damaging. Know that you can experience amazing, wondrous connections with absolutely everyone and everything when you start to run programs of self-love. The more you connect with source, the more love you have for yourself and all others. Many of you are afraid to connect with others because you are afraid you will connect with their dysfunction. But as you start to elevate your frequency and connecting more with source, you start to connect to your own divine self. And as a reflection, you will begin to connect to the divinity and others. 
As you do so, every relationship can start to feel like a loving relationship. It doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be a struggle. The difficulties and the struggles come from fear programs, and these are all illusionary. I was pretty much saying this earlier. This is the toxicity, right, versus the healthy relationship. The more you stay present and the more you can identify those programs and decide in the moment not to judge, you will be able to change what you are pulsing out and dramatically alter your relationships. In your love relationships, you all tend to go back to memories of the past, making assumptions that this moment will be identical to a previous one, thus repeating the same old patterns. You use your past experiences at a, as a point of reference rather than simply being present and allowing the moment to be a new and unique. You say to yourself, this is what happened to me in the past and it is just going to happen to me again. How many of you have had that thought? As you change the relationship that you have with yourself, your old programming, you will then change the relationship that you have with others. Others do not have to change their behavior in order for you to alter the dynamics of a relationship. This is true for all manner of relationship, including a family member, a coworker, a lover, a friend, etc. Like attracts like so as you start changing your programming if others in your entourage are still running the old programs which are no longer a match for you they won't be able to play them out with you they may play the old programs out with others but again not with you remember only when there is a vibrational attraction do you co-create and i've said this before like I've, I've talked about this i had a great example through my 20s and early 30s, I had the propensity to date very narcissistic men who were very abusive. And I ended up in trauma therapy in my early 30s. After I went through that experience with a trauma therapist and I got to the root of what was going on and work through it, all of a sudden, without me even having to try, I started to attract healthier men. Men who were nothing like the men of the past. So that is true because I had shifted because I did the work because I realized that through, even though the men who I was with were absolutely abusive and that was wrong of them, I was the common denominator in all those relationships. So something within me needed to shift in order for me to stop attracting that type of person. All right. And so, so it, it that makes so much sense right now. You are entering a period of creation of form like never before. We encourage you to focus on frequency, joy, abundance, self-love, harmony, etc. It is all about the essence of creation and not about what it should look like. By focusing on frequency rather than form, you are releasing the burden of expectation and the desire for the connection outside of you. Like looking for your other half, the one that is supposed to complete you. You got to complete yourself. This is very strong in your social construct and women have a more challenging time with that because of social condi conditioning. Why? For the last several thousand years, women have, have been socially conditioned to believe that their only value is as a wife and a mother. Beyond that, women are not supposed to want anything more or different. As a result of those beliefs, if you are not in a relationship, you have less value or something is wrong with you. This is why self-love is important. It also is survival for women too. I think they kind of left that out, but... You know, I was actually talking my, with my boyfriend about this, um, and I had I had found this this interesting when I was doing um, my research into the Georgia werewolf, which I will place those videos down in the description box below if you missed those videos. But I found this out that Georgia, the state of Georgia where I'm from, was one of the first states in the nation to actually give women inheritance rights. So think about it that way for for thousands and thousands of years and, and and that's one thing i will say too i talked about past lives being an issue but maybe it's your your nervous system and it's, it's not a past life necessarily that you have a fear of heights but it's actually just your nervous system doing what it's supposed to do there's also this idea of of, of inherited karma or having ancestral memories which sometimes people also confuse as past lives when it's actually just an ancestral instinct that's coming through your dna and for women for many, many, many lifetimes, women could not inherit. They could not make money. And so a woman's salvation as a human being 
depended on her eligibility for marriage. Georgia, again, in the 1800s, the state of Georgia was one of the first states in the United States to allow women the right to inherit from their fathers. Before then, if, if I lived, you know, 300 years ago, and I inherited from my, my father, basically, because my mother wouldn't count, it would go to my husband or my son. And I would just be what they call kept, which most women were kept. And so you think about that, like for many, many years, women didn't really have the potential to survive without a husband, without that, that, that man to be able to help her, provide for her. And so for women too, I, I do think that that is a lingering obsession that women have being obsessed with certain men, wanting certain men, because it is in our DNA that that was what it took to survive. And if we really think about that, especially for the younger people wa uh, watching who are out in the dating market, really consider that when you're, when you feel obsessed with a guy, like, is this, do you really love this guy? Or is this something in you that is afraid that is in fear, as they say, or lacking? Is this, a, is this an ancestral memory? Breathe into that and release it and let it go and remind yourself that you now live in 2023. So that does not necessary for you to, uh, you, you have the inheritance, right? You have the right. And I know it's still an issue because women don't still don't make the same amount of money as men do all that kind of stuff, but we're in a far better circumstance now than we've ever been as women. So anyway, all right. For men, the conditioning is a little different. Value is placed on work and money. If you lack money or are unemployed, self-worth issues come to the surface. Generally speaking, for men, it is about asserting what is tangible. For women, it's about what is emotionally connected. Women get locked into the idea of wanting a relationship and men have a challenging time expressing emotions since from a very young age, they are often taught to suppress them. Take a nice deep breath. Self-love is something that you already carry within. It is not something that you have to achieve, but rather you simply dissolve the illusionary programs and filters that prevent you from experiencing more of that self-love. The reflections that you receive through your relationships in the world will show you what programs still need to be integrated. We can tell you what self-love looks like in the physical body, radiant health. If you are giving yourself self-love, you are giving yourself source energy. The cells are able to maintain health and vitality because they are receiving high frequency energy. The physical body is created by the energetic template. So any ailment in the physical body is a reflection of a lower frequency in your energetic template. Yeah. Check in at the emotional level. If you are feeling any lower emotions like anxiety, depression, anger, or fear, there is a lack of self-love going on. At the mental level, if your inner critic is expressing any, any negative thoughts like I'm not good enough or I don't deserve this, that is the opposite of self-love. You are not accessing the self-love that is contained in you. For the last 25 years, you have been told that it is time to reawaken. Well, we would like to help you with that practicing of reawakening. It is something that you have to keep doing on a day-to-day -day basis, hour by hour, minute by minute, and eventually, moment to moment, this is our focus in 2013. That's how old this book is. It's 10 years old. Many of you will find excuses not to practice, often pretending that you are too busy. Are you really too busy to love yourself? I say that all the time with people who are like, oh, I can't exercise. I don't have time. I'm like, yes, yes, you do. Everybody has time to do a little exercise. Absolutely. You just don't want to. Knowing that the theory is one thing. Knowing the theory is one thing, but practicing and implementing it into moment-to-moment -moment reality is another. Practice simply means being aware at any given moment of where you are vibrating at the mental, emotional, and physical levels and making adjustments, releasing judgment and allowing more love to flow. Maintaining frequency is another aspect of creation that we have not yet discussed. You see, when you pulse out frequency, you must be vibrating at the same rate in order to receive it in a physical form. You cannot pulse out a high frequency and receive it when you are vibrating at a lower rate. You must be in the same vibrational space. They both have to be aligned. If they are, 
you are going to receive what you asked for. If you find that what you requested isn't showing up, have appreciation for what is considered a gift. What is directly in front of you shows you your consciousness and subconscious programmings. As you integrate these, you can elevate your frequency to match that which you seek to create. In order to change where you are, you have to accept where you are. I love that. That is, that's good. In order to change where you are, you have to accept where you are. If you keep pushing away the thing that you don't want, what you are doing in reality is charging yourself to it. When you open up, acknowledge that low frequency without pushing it away and have appreciation for it, for it you neutralize the charge. You are no longer playing the game of victim predator. Once you do that, the issue is dissolved. <laughs> that was That's deep. That is really deep, you guys. Hold on one second. Relationships. Many of you have chosen to awaken at this time, have decided not to have long-term relationships for a number of reasons. For many, it was important for you to find your identity and be clear about your own energy. Thus, you placed your focus on self. Had you been in a relationship, the dynamic would have been different. Following a traditional path can make it easier to plug into mass consciousness and all beliefs that come with it. As you increase your frequency, some of the programming around isolation and avoidance of intimate relationships is coming to an end. With the up shift in energies following 2012, contracts of that nature have changed as you are activating the 5D programs. It will be vital to work on self-love in order to experience the kind of deep, meaningful relationship you seek. To create a relationship that stems from a higher consciousness perspective, you have to work on integration of masculine and feminine within. Again, this requires you to first and foremost establish a connection with self. You have no choice. Those in your external reality are simply there to add to your physical experience. They don't complete it. They don't define it. The connection that you are seeking is with source energy and to experience that. You have to connect with self first. Generally speaking, in an intimate relationship, you are more open and that openness and willingness to feel love brings you closer to source energy. That amazing sense of bliss and love that you feel is not there because of the other person. It is coming from you. Absolutely. How's that for a mind bender? You are feeling more of what source energy is and it happened because you were willing to be open. But when that relationship ends, you think that you will never experience that sense of bliss again. It is possible through self-love and openness to receive. Can you experience that feeling of bliss without a partner? Absolutely. You will feel it not only towards another person in partnership, but towards everyone and everything. Our purpose is to help you find that self-love. Start by writing a letter about what you appreciate about yourself, your qualities, and your kindness. Would you be afraid to tell someone you love what you think about them? So why not do it for yourself? And that's interesting because in both the 30-day shadow work challenge and the 60-day shadow work challenge that we've done on this channel... If you guys remember, if you did it, there was an exercise in both of those challenges where I had you find a person in your life, not a family member, but someone that you know in your life that you really respect and that you have a lot of admiration for. And I had you write that person a letter and tell that person everything that you admired and respected about them. You could have left it anonymous. I had you write it by hand because it's more meaningful when it comes from handwritten and give that person that letter. That was part of the exercise too. Again, you could have left it anonymous or you could have signed it. And then after you went through that, I had you go back and rewrite all the points of that person that you loved and reflect on that, that that is actually aspects of you. So we often say in like shadow work challenges that people that annoy you, that piss you off, they, they annoy you and piss you off because what annoys you and pisses you off about them are aspects of yourself that you don't like. But the same is also true for the, the stuff you like, right? So the things you like about someone, the, for those who watch my channel all the time, my, my, my regulars, I love you guys. But the things about me that you watch, that you like about me, that, that, that keep you coming back, it's not me. It's aspects of yourself. How cool is that, right? Like I'm just mirroring back aspects of yourself for those who hate me. Again, I'm mirroring back aspects of yourself. The same thing with people in my life, they mirror back aspects of me. And when we can understand that, we can start from a place of like, like they say, neutrality. 
where you can start to go, oh, interesting. Okay, interesting. Here's a new puzzle for me to solve. Here's a new obstacle for me to work through. Yeah? Okay. Now take your qualities or the appreciation of those qualities and focus on them. Those qualities are in your energetic field. And when you can show more appreciation for them, it will help you create more of these qualities in your life. You just have to feel them in your body instead of having your inner critic tell you that you are not good enough, you are not lovable or smart enough, etc. But when you stop and focus your energy on what you appreciate, you will get more of the things in your life. More importantly, your inner critic will have less time to give you those negative thoughts. What will happen after a week of this? Your interaction with other people will be vastly different because once again, they will be the reflections of you loving yourself. For example, if one of those qualities that you focus on is peacefulness, you will find that people will say things like, I feel very peaceful and calm when I am in your presence. Or if someone is very agitated, when he comes into contact with your energy fields, he will become more peaceful. If one of your qualities is being a loving person, then what you will see is more opportunities for being lo loving. And you will have people come into your field that also will be more loving because that is where your focus is. What we are inviting you to do is to do what we are inviting you to do is to work the 5D way instead of the 3D way. There is a part of the human mind that will not release until a conscious awareness is present. Once you have that, you can let it go if you choose. It is part of the construct of the game that you have set up for yourself. This is a 3D model. The 5D model of creation is alignment with frequency. So by working with the 5D model, you are simply realigning yourself with the essence of what you want. That is... That is in part what we are guiding you towards by pulling out those qualities that you want and that you appreciate within yourself. This will help you put less attention on things you don't want. You are now able because you have elevated your frequency to activate the inner technology of 5D creation. And if you guys saw my last coffee chat with Catherine Edwards over on her channel, which I will again link that in the description box below. We talked about like each gave three different mindsets that help us get through the day. And one of them is something that's relatively new for me that I heard from uh, like TikTok on Instagram, a, a shared TikTok on Instagram, where some girl said, you know, we, we always are preparing for the worst case scenario. Like what's the worst case scenario? Well, why do we even say that? We don't even need to say that. Let's talk about the best case scenario. So what I've been doing is every day I wake up and I go, okay, what's the best case scenario for this day? When I find myself slipping into anxiety and negative self-talk, I will stop myself and I will say, nope, what's the best case scenario? And so that's a challenge I'm going to put out to you guys. Like every morning when you wake up, can you, can you say to the universe, I want the best case scenario for this day? So it can't hurt, right? It cannot hurt you. So when I try it and let me know what happens. All right. We are going to walk you through the inner technology of creation. First, think about something that you like to create. Now, what is the essence of it? What is the frequency of it? Meaning, what does it represent vibrationally? Freedom, joy, excitement, stability. Oh, that's easy. Let's think about money. We all, everyone always needs money, right? So you want to create more money for yourself. What does that represent? It ab absolutely represents freedom. Having money represents freedom. It, for me, the more money I make, the more I feel like I'm able to give back to others. The more I'm able to make free shadow work challenges for other people, the more I'm able to, to, to do more charity work, right? So money to me also represents service to others. Yeah? Does that make sense? Yeah? Then what we'd like you to do is to imagine yourself aligning with the frequency in your physical body. You don't have to think then or where, just be in alignment with the essence of what you want. The model of creation is much easier because you are working with frequency and not mental images of the form. Remember, you are a vibrational being. In 5D, you are simply removing the mental component. So if you want to create change in your life, we would say to start here with a love letter to yourself and see what happens. We challenge you to do this for the next seven days by spending 10 minutes every morning writing yourself a new love letter. 
Let's do it, guys. I'll do it with you. So let's do that every day. Then focus on the frequencies of the qualities that you have written in that love letter. If there is resistance, you can go back to the 3D model of visualizing the form. If you find you don't want to write yourself a love letter, ask yourself why you are resisting. To keep safe from accessing more of your power or more love? Is it a control issue? Noting the source of your resistance will show you what lower frequency programs you are running. The natural flow of all things is towards source. So if something is difficult, there is resistance. If you are in divine flow, it is easy, easy, easy. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Um, so I, I'm going to do that. I want to, I want to hear what you guys for the next seven days until we meet again next Tuesday, write yourself a, a love letter, 10 minutes, writing yourself a love letter. Let's just see what happens in the next week. Let's talk about how that shifts for you. How does it shift for you? Okay. All right. So with that being said, before we finish up with the last section, I, we do need to take a brief moment from a word from our sponsors, ASEA. My uncle Dan used to talk about QTR. QTR meant for him quality time remaining. My Uncle Dan was a very active cyclist and a very avid hiker. And after he retired, after a long career, he decided that he really wanted to make the most of the years he had left where there was quality to his life before the aging process really limited his ability to enjoy things like cycling and hiking. Unfortunately, my Uncle Dan did lose his battle to cancer back in 2019, but when I was first introduced to the ASEA product, all I kept thinking about was my Uncle Dan and his concoction post-retirement of quality time remaining. As human beings, we've been taught that as our body starts to age, we eventually have to start giving up some of the activities that we enjoyed. For my uncle, that was cycling and hiking. With the ASEA supplement, what this product does is it restores signaling back into the body. Signaling, our communication between the cells of the body, is what actually allows the aging process to happen. Your body is designed by nature, by God, whatever you want to call that higher consciousness, it's designed to heal itself. That's why the cells communicate. That's why you have an immune system. But unfortunately, as we become conditioned to the toxins of this world, that immune system and that signaling system start to wear down. When our body loses signaling, that's what causes wrinkles. That's what causes cellulite. That's what causes the hair to gray. And for men, that's potentially what causes hair loss. As Dr. Silverman has used as an example, when we are a child and we fall off of our bicycle and skin our knees, our recovery time is pretty quick. This is because we have an abundance of redox or signaling in our bodies. But after puberty and into our adulthood, we rapidly start to lose this signaling. So if we were to fall off a bike at 80, that could mean life or death. Now for me, since I've been on the SIA now for about three months, I have noticed a tremendous amount of energy and endurance restored back to my life. As you guys all know, I am an avid exerciser. I truly believe in the power of a good sweat. And since starting the ASEA, I have noticed that my recovery time between workouts and my endurance within workouts has enhanced immensely. I'm able to go longer and harder. I've also noticed, as many of you guys have commented in the comment section, I feel like I'm getting younger or at least looking younger. No, my age keeps going up, but I look back and compare my videos now to the videos I did when I first started YouTube and I feel like I look younger now than I did then. And I do have to say that is most likely because of the ASEA. When I talked to my mother about this product, I mentioned the quality time remaining that my uncle Dan used to speak of and how with the ASEA for her as a grandmother, this product can give her the potential to have a lot longer quality time of playing in the backyard with her grandchildren. 
In fact, so many amazing, incredible stories can be found in comment sections of this video and on Asiya's own YouTube channel, which I will place down in the description box below. Now, we can't make any medical claims with this product as it is just a supplement. But from my perspective and from all of the um, perspectives and experiences I've read from you guys, this product has done nothing but enhance every single person's life, every single person's quality time remaining, whether that be 50 years or 10 years. We see a lot of people talk about med beds, this idea of med beds. Everybody's waiting for a med bed. But what if I told you, in my opinion, the med bed is already here. With the ASEA, what it comes with, each liquid, it's a liquid, each liquid comes with its own shot glass. The shot glass is about two ounces. Each person is instructed to take between four and eight ounces a day. You take a little shot of the ASEA, you swish it around for 30 to 60 seconds so that you allow the saliva to carry the redox where it wants to carry it, and then you swallow the rest. The redox is so genius, and the creators of this product are so genius genius that in my opinion they really really honored and respected God's design because you see when you take the liquid redox you are allowing your body its own intelligence because the redox is just a tool it's just the signaling for your cells your cells your body is designed to heal itself and this is what helps the body to continue to heal itself and so when you take the liquid your body knows knows exactly where it needs to send the redox, what part of your body is wounded, what part of your body isn't so stable. And so it sends the redox to that particular area so the cells in that area can start to communicate to get that particular area of the body back to where it needs to be. Now, of course, with this redox gel, you are able to direct the gel wherever you want it to go. So today I woke up and had a little bit of a creak in my neck. So I took the redox gel and I rubbed it on the back of my neck three times within five minutes. I personally, in my experience, automatically started to feel relief. You can also use this as a beauty supplement too. I've been using the gel on my thighs and on my boobs because yes, friends, I am 40 years old and as, as the aging process does occur, the body starts to droop a little bit. And no, I've never had children, so my boobs aren't as droopy as they could be if I had used them to feed a child, but they still are. You know, I got boobs and they, 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 they are, they're starting to sink a little bit. I also have stretch marks on my boobs that I've had my whole life because, you know, they grew at some point when I was a child. So I've been taking the gel and putting them on my chest. And not only have I noticed a difference, but my boyfriend has also noticed a different difference as well. My boyfriend has been putting the gel on his head. As he is in his 50s now, he has started to notice thinning of the hair, as most men do around that age in their lives. And he is starting to grow his hair back which is quite incredible. In fact, I find myself now when I walk past him putting my hand in his hair just to feel all the hair that's growing back on his head. You see, my friends, your body doesn't want to fail you. It wants to keep you going. It wants to keep you healthy. That is how God designed it. And this product is basically the controllers of this world's worst nightmare. Now, once again, I can't make any medical claims because this product is just a supplement, but from everything I have researched about this product, from all of the people using this product, you really can't go wrong with this product. And because this product uses the intelligence of your body, each individual person is going to start to notice different things occurring with this product. If you are interested in learning more about this product or purchasing this product, Product or even becoming a part of the business of ASEA, please text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to 321-216-8047 and Jay or Hillis will get back to you as soon as possible. If you are texting from a country outside of the United States, please make sure that you add plus one. 321-216-8047 plus one is our country code. And in your text, 
on top of texting Bryce info, just make sure you let Jay or Hillis know that you are texting from a country outside the United States so they can arrange a call with you on WhatsApp or Signal or Zoom, any application that's not going to charge you. With that being said, another amazing thing about the SEA company is that they do offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if this product doesn't work for you or isn't what you expected after the first 30 days, they will refund you. All right, back to our show. All right, you guys, the last section of this is obligations. I say it's the last section. Yeah, it's the last section. <laughs> like, let me double check that. It is the last section. Now we want you to list five obligations that you have. I don't know if I said that, but the last section is called obligations. All right, let's start that again, shall we? Cut, let's start again. Obligations, the last section. Now we want you to list five obstacles that you have. For example, you may feel obligated to call a parent every day, or maybe you feel obligated to have lunch every week with a certain friend. It could be something in the present, past, or future. Once your list is done, we would like you to consider saying no to that obligation. My therapist made me do this, you guys. I ha Actually, but it was, I have a fear of being late. I am traumatized from private school. I swear to God, private school is its own cult. And anyway, it's a long story, but I have a fear of being late to things. I am always, I'm not just punctual. I will get there 10 minutes early. And so my therapist made me be late to things to see what would happen, right? So I get what they're doing here. I totally get what they're doing there. <clears throat> when it comes to doing something out of obligation, we would either say not to do it or have, or have you refrain your perception of it. Knowing that when you agree to do something and the intentional underneath is of a lower frequency, meaning there is a resistance in doing it, or it makes you unhappy, that is what is going to be created in reality, a low vibrational experience. Let's take an example of lunch with a friend. If you don't want to go for any reason, then you simply cancel or you frame it by finding something that you can appreciate and love about the person and or your lunch date. This makes a big difference in the vibrational outcome of what you experience. This is a big piece of working with self-love. Doing something that you don't want to do takes such a huge amount of energy that it prevents you from nourishing yourself. This is part of your conditioning, especially for women. You think that you have to give, 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 and you end up energetically bankrupt. So it is very important that you look at obligations that you have set up. When you go through with something that you don't want to do, you are not honoring yourself. This is not only includes obligation and relationships to other, but also obligations you place on yourself, like going to the gym because you feel like that you should. Mm, on Well, that's discipline though. And that's confronting. I have a different viewpoint on that. On uh, Absolutely. Diet is also a big one, especially around being a vegetarian. There's a lot of, yeah, no, we've already, this guys, we went through this a couple of chapters back. So I'm not even going to get into it. If you want to get into the vegetarianism and exercise stuff, that's just go down into the playlist. I went and we went into this a few sections back. All right. Money is another big issue. Money is nothing more than energy. Funny, we talked about, or I talked about money earlier in this reading. Are you worried about money in your life? And what does it represent to you? It is usually what money represents that you need to focus on. Is it freedom, creativity, status, or worthiness? If you lack money, what is it that you are denying yourself and why? A fear program is present. If you truly loved and nourished yourself, you would allow yourself to ex the experience of having infinite abundance, and that includes money. So think about that. The more loving you are with yourself, the more loving you can be with everyone and everything. If you don't do that, you will find yourself very tired and running in circles. We know this not we know this is not always an easy thing to look at, and we applaud you for doing so. We are so very excited for you and we really want to acknowledge your willingness to look inside of you to find that self-love first and foremost because all things are created from this point. All right, you guys. Until next Tuesday where we will pick up with the next channeling once again. I really hope you guys are all going to be writing those letters to yourself this week. Please let me know next week if you've done that and how it helped you. All right, you guys. I will talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.